Of all the rocks in the Earth's crust, this is the one we use the most. Limestone. This much limestone, 600 tonnes of it, is quarried in the UK every minute. After one hour, the pile grows to 36,000 tonnes of limestone. This is how much limestone each person uses every year. A surprising three and a half tonnes of it. So what do we use so much limestone for? Farmers need limestone to help neutralise acid soils so that crops like these grow really well. I'm a stone sculptor and the reason I use limestone is that it carves very well uh, it lasts a long time and it's a really beautiful stone. I work in the construction industry where the use of limestone is absolutely essential. It is in our concrete, bricks, cement and even in our glass. It's used for building and construction of schools, of hospitals, uh, factories of shopping centres. Also, uh, it forms all the transportation links between those. We can also take limestone and we can grind it for cosmetics. It's used in medicines and it's even used as a main constituent in toothpaste. And if you think using limestone to clean your teeth is odd, how about eating it? It's added to bread as a source of calcium. It's also a vital ingredient in the extraction of iron from iron ore. Limestone is made from the remains of shells and sea creatures. It formed under the sea millions of years ago. Today, it makes up some of the most beautiful landscapes in the country. This programme looks at how much we need limestone and the effect quarrying it has on the environment. There are around 300 limestone quarries in the UK. Most are in England and Wales. And over 30 lie in or around national parks, protected areas of natural beauty. This concerns environmentalist Amanda Nobbs. Every year, 100 million people come to our national parks expecting to be able to get away from the stresses of modern life and enjoy beautiful countryside. And they have a horrible shock when they come along and discover these ugly white scars in the countryside with all the dust and the incessant noise of quarry lorries. Quarrying in the Yorkshire Dales National Park has been an issue for many years. I live in a village in the Yorkshire Dales. Um, We've got a quarry just up the road from us and another one about a few miles further up. <whistles> Every day we have to put up with um, an air raid siren warning us that there's going to be a blast like there is going off now. Ten, nine, eight. And then there'll be a huge blast that usually shakes my house. Three, two, one. Traffic is one of the biggest problems to do with the quarry. The lorries are coming past all the time, just like these here. And um, it's constantly from morning till late at night. Um, hundreds of them go past every day. So with so many truckloads, where does all the limestone go? And can the amount we use be reduced? Limestone is used in the construction industry because of its very strong and hard properties. In the building of a house, limestone is used in many areas. As an aggregate, we crush the limestone down to make our concrete. 
and we use that in the foundations, which actually provides support for the house. We can use it by grinding it down into a fine powder, manufacturing cement, which we use to bond the buildings and bricks together. And limestone even finds its place in the manufacture of our glass for our windows. So just how much limestone does the average house contain? An amazing 50 tonnes of it. And it isn't just used in the building of houses. Its strength and durability make it a first choice material for roads and motorways. In fact, the construction industry is the biggest consumer, using about 80% of old quarried limestone. So, can they do without it? I find it very difficult as a builder to see how we can continue to build our houses, motorways and roads without the use of quarried limestone. As a material, it's proved very versatile and useful. Limestone is also used in agriculture. It may only make up 3% of old quarried limestone, but it's essential for neutralising acid soils. Most crops don't grow so well on acidic soils, so it's important for farmers to test their soils after each harvest. To find out how acid or alkaline it is, the pH of the soil is measured. A small amount is placed in a glass tube. Adding pure water makes a solution. The pH is tested accurately with a specially designed indicator. After mixing the soil and the indicator thoroughly, the tube is left for a few minutes. The soil sinks to the bottom and the colour of the solution is then easy to see. This soil is too acidic. It's at pH 5.5. What it should be is near a pH 6.5. 6.5 is almost neutral. This is where limestone comes in handy. The chemical name for limestone is calcium carbonate. Spreading it over the field will neutralise the acidic soil. Although you can't see it, when calcium carbonate mixes with the soil, a chemical reaction is slowly taking place. On a small scale, the reaction can be observed more easily using dilute acid. A few drops of universal indicator monitor the pH. Red means the solution is strongly acidic. Add calcium carbonate and the solution fizzes. The reaction is producing a gas called carbon dioxide. As more calcium carbonate is added, the redness starts to fade. This colour change means the solution is now less acidic. A yellow-green colour indicates that it's almost neutral. Acid plus calcium carbonate produces a neutral solution. Adding limestone changes the pH of the soil, so can farmers do without it? Farmers are looking to alternatives to limestone. Seaweed is a possibility and they are also using methods such as soil testing and careful crop rotations to reduce its use. But finding an alternative as good as limestone is proving difficult, so it looks as though farmers will be using limestone for a long time yet. Calcium carbonate is an important chemical. As well as being crushed, sorted and used straight from the quarry face, it can also be processed. This is what happens to 3% of all limestone. The calcium carbonate is transported to huge kilns where it's tipped into the top and burnt.
Inside the kiln, the temperature reaches over 1,000 Celsius. The heat causes the calcium carbonate to decompose. It breaks down to carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. Water trapped inside the rock leaves the chimney as steam, along with invisible carbon dioxide gas. The other product, calcium oxide, drops out of the bottom of the kiln. It's used in the chemical industry and in the manufacture of steel. But it can also be further processed. Reacting the calcium oxide with water produces another useful chemical. This reaction gives out a huge amount of energy. The temperature reaches 98 Celsius. Calcium oxide and water makes calcium hydroxide. The calcium hydroxide solution turns universal indicator paper blue, showing that it's alkaline. It's an essential chemical for purifying water, making cement and processing leather. A more unusual use of limestone is in art. I love sculpture, it's, it's my life. You can carve a form in limestone and hopefully it will be there in a hundred years or even a thousand years time. One of the consequences of me making sculpture is scars on the landscape, uh, quarries that are, are far from beautiful, and they're damaging the visual environment. And it's something I think that all sculptors who work in stone think about and worry about and are very mixed about. The reason I like working with limestone is the, it's a very beautiful stone and uh, it holds the marks of the tools and you, you can use those marks, the, the marks the claw make uh, in the limestone to accentuate the form you're carving. You can, uh, the, 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 the points of the claw for example will leave uh, a pointed texture on the stone. It's a very nice stone to carve. It's a nice mottled stone. It has the blue and the, uh, the kind of beigey colour. And when you polish it, uh, you smooth it down from this kind of clawed texture and you polish it up, you can see the, all the little shells locked inside the stone. I feel very mixed about quarrying limestone. It's my life and I couldn't do anything else. I love making sculpture. I just hope that people feel that the, the things that I make from limestone are, are possibly as beautiful as the, the limestone in its natural, natural environment in the landscape. So limestone has many uses and there's a huge demand for it. In this country alone, we quarry 120 million tonnes a year. But as we've already heard, there is a price to pay. There are many drawbacks to living in a national park with a limestone quarry on your doorstep. The quarries that are around here, they're just like big monsters that invade all the, the really nice hills. There's over 700 lorries that go past in a day and they're really noisy and loud and you can hear them from our house. All the vegetation is just covered in white dust and it just looks appalling really. It's meant to be green as the grass, not grey. I just think it's awful for the tourists that come from other countries and think that the Yorkshire Dales is um, the be one of the best places to go. It's nice and everything, but the quarries just ruins it. You just have to get used to living with the noise of the quarry if you live around here. It's just a part of living opposite it. Even at school, you can still hear it rumbling and blasting. Quarry manager Peter Gillett explains how quarries are trying to minimise the dust and noise. The main environmental concerns people have are about noise when we, when we blast. When we actually blast, uh, we monitor the impact in terms of vibration and noise regularly to, to check they are within permitted limits. The 
lorries before they leave our premises are washed and cleaned. And we have a very stringent policy of sheeting the lorries to minimise the effect once they're out on the roads. So, are quarries doing enough to satisfy locals and environmentalists? Quarry companies are trying to make great play of the fact that they're now putting sheets over their lorries and that they've changed some of their practices in blasting. But we really don't believe that it's made any significant difference on the impact of quarrying on national parks. We believe that quarrying is the most damaging thing that you can do in a national park. Once you've taken out a chunk, it's gone forever. You can never reverse the damage and make things better. Obviously, you can't put quarried rock back, but some quarries are finding ways of restoring the land. It is important and we are concerned about how we look from outside our boundaries. And in areas that can be seen, we progressively restore them and we plant grass and we plant trees and we restore it to basically blend in with the local area. So what was once a bleak quarry face now looks like this, a grassy countryside slope, much like any other. As well as restoring as they go, some quarries have plans for the land when the quarry reaches the end of its life. Plans which certainly please some of the locals. Quarry near our village is planning to take all the machinery that you can see currently as you drive past off the side of the road and put it over the hill and then when it's all finished they're going to take all that machinery away and put a lake there so in about 30 years time there'll be a rather beautiful lake which hopefully will benefit everybody but restoration costs money and not all quarries are prepared to pay so are there any advantages to having a quarry nearby? By the nature of where the stone is, quarries tend to be in rural locations. In those areas, the main industries are historically and traditionally quarrying, agriculture and more recently, tourism. The quarry itself provides jobs for the local people as well as a lot of other jobs for people associated with the quarry. If the quarries weren't here, there would be an awful lot of people um, out of work uh, in one way or another. Knowing whether quarrying limestone from national parks is a good or bad thing is difficult. We don't want to put people out of work and stop supplying a vital material, but we can't ignore the environmental concerns. So what should we do? We need to make sure that we use anything that we take out of a national park really wisely, that we recycle the materials as much as possible because, for example, when roads are repaired or when buildings are demolished, it is possible to reuse a lot of the material. We can all do our bit as well. For example, if you recycle paper or you recycle glass, they include minerals and you're actually helping to make a difference then. Reducing demand is one way forward. Another alternative is to close down quarries in areas of natural beauty. But where would the limestone end up coming from instead? How would you feel if a quarry was planning to open on your doorstep?